Hey guys, Jason here. So, <clears throat> to my last video, I guess, uh, I guess I don't know where to go. I guess most would like to know, um, uh, what I've been seeing. Well, let's hold on. Let's see if I have it here. So, well, I don't know if you noticed. So this is what I've been working on. Well, I've known this for a while, right? 2020, X is 2020, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. What can I say, right? Like, you know, how do you explain to people that here's your name in the Bible? Here's what I know, right? Like, I've been studying this since I was seven years old, guys. I'm showing you how the biblical spirit works because that's what it's about. It has nothing to do with our ideas, guys. I'm just showing you how it all fits. Like, we all know what happened in with the COVID lockdown, right? In Saskatchewan, it went down March 20th, 2020. That was my aunt's birthday. My aunt is the woman that raised me, fulfilling the virgin birth because it was my father that gave me to her. She didn't bear me, but she raised me, right? So she has raised me as a mother, right? So, if you notice, if you guys could look at this for a moment and see what you come out of this. What do you see? Do you see the irony? <laughs> That's what I mean. It's just like, there's a sense of humor here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It has nothing to do with Jesus. It's, it's the word, guys. It has nothing to do with the name. Right? I could show you my name all day. None of you are going to believe it. Right? <laughs> you don't even believe Jesus. You're stuck on Paul's words because you guys are serving your flesh. Right? And you guys have no clue. The Jewish people are stuck in their traditions. They have no idea who God, who God is or, or neglect to see because they're wrapped up too much into their ideology. And that's the trap. That's the prison of the mind. You can't seem to let go and admit that you're wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all I'm doing is showing you how it fits. Like what was what was what throughout the world, all the ERs were seem to be, are still quite busy, <laughs> as you could <can> see, <laughs> right? And exactly on that day, precisely, it was already known that everyone's going to be locked in their homes. Right? Perfectly. Now that's what you guys should be looking for. Right? And we know that the solar eclipse happened. Right? Right? Now I want you to pay attention to these two, these next two verses carefully. Because you're going to begin to see something. So, the solar eclipse happened 2024 of April 8th, right? We all know this. It, the whole world knows it. <laughs> so there's no disputing that. That's a fact. So now we got to tie it in with the scripture. Joel 2.31, which is also tied to Jeremiah 23.1. Woe to my pastors that destroy and scatter the flock of my sheep, saith the Lord. Why? Because they're lying about the things of God. That's why Peter called or Jesus called Peter Satan because you're presuming, you're assuming this is Jesus. Oh, this is this is the Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Spirit. You guys assume all these things. This is the this is the error of men, right? So when actually you actually see it, <laughs> who the person is behind the whole business of the Bible, you you deny it because you've been brainwashed to think one thing. There's nothing I can do to help you with that. 
you have to understand the word that it's about the word it has nothing to do with us. That's why I'm showing you this. I even give you the coordinates on Google Earth, which is associated with Isaiah 65, 11. You know, you forget the holy mountain of the Lord. It, it, the Bible clearly says that. I'm showing you the actual coordinates. <laughs> right? How else does God move mountains? So they move it from the fake to the, to the real. Right? Okay, so the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Okay, so the sun turned into darkness is the solar eclipse, so it's been fulfilled. Okay, and the blood moons have been fulfilled. Okay, so before, so this is before this. Okay, the great and terrible day of the Lord come. So when this happens, it's going to be before this. Okay. Now, and um, we're in the playoffs right now, right? The Oilers and the Panthers are in the Stanley Cup final. Lord Stanley, Stanley, right? So the previous game to that was the Stars and the Oilers, okay? Which happened to be, you know, on the 24th and 29th. And the interesting thing about that day was prior to that on dialysis day for me was uh, Monday. Monday was on the 27th of June, <laughs> okay? I sat in chair 27, <laughs> right? In Regina General. On Wednesday, on that game, right, on the 29th, I chat, I sat in chair 29. <laughs> That's just the way it is. You can even ch I can even show you my my uh, medical records because they document everything. That's what I mean. There's no disputing. I can I can go to dialysis, show you all the times of days, my blood pressure, everything. You question your you question why he's the most high. Well, for a period of there. For, for a couple of years, my blood pressure went extremely high because I all I kept seeing is nothing but liars. Now, if you imagine yourself, you have a child that's constantly lying right to your face and you know they're lying, right? And if that was one of your children and you knew they were lying, what would you do, guys? Right? The best you could do is you try to keep guiding them, and you keep guiding them, and you keep, keep guiding them. You keep showing them the correct scripture. That's what I've been doing, and that's what these rapture cultists don't seem to want to listen to. Right? And that's the disappointing part. Because the word is, is, is ultimately divinely beautiful. Right? If you look at it, not looking at towards the, to your goggles of you're saved and all that, it's because you're not saved until you actually stand before God. Why would you stand before God? Because God is the one that shows you these secrets, right? Deuteronomy 29, 29 tells you, right? As you need the number 29, <laughs> 29, like I was in chair 29 and it was on the 29th day, right? These, these, these clues of mine are just blaring at me all the time. It's been like that for me since I was a kid, okay? I try to tell this to Christians. I tell it to, to this people throughout my life, throughout my life, try to show the verses like this. Nobody wanted to listen to me. Even now, nobody wants to listen to me. But now I have evidence, video evidence, so I'm documenting what I leave behind. So that way people can see that I was here. All right? So now we go to the next verse, Matthew 24, 29. Right? As you notice, it's a 2024 and a 29th month when that happened. Right? Immediately after the tribulation, notice here, immediately after the tribulation, which is telling you that the tribulation happens after. Okay? The sun shall be darkened. So before and after, the, the day of the Lord will show up. Right? The Lord will show up after right the tribulation right 
and the stars shall solve from heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Which is basically telling you the tribulation's over. Like, here, here's my name. There's there's no disputing. I'm showing you where the Ten Commandments are. It's like, it's here. The, these two verses alone tell you exactly what more do I have to say? Right? I like to say, you know, uh, we know the lamb. What does a lamb make? Ba. <laughs> That's right. B-A. I like to say, like, I also say I like to have my my uh, B-A in God's divine law. <laughs> right? People won't catch that. But now you should. Right? Now you understand what I'm talking about. But this is basically, you know, the remarkable thing. The stars will fall from heaven. Well, you need to understand what heaven is. Right. Okay, so I tried to make it as simple and precise as possible, right? If you uh, take a look here, we're, we all talk through the internet. That's a fact, right? Most of us use Windows. Some of us use us our Android. Some use our our Apple. <laughs> Go figure that one, right? You know the uh, what was the forbidden fruit? The apple. Why? Because you can you can search out evil things. You can search out good things. The knowledge of good and evil, right? But what people don't seem to comprehend is about that tree, the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's about God's knowledge, the knowledge of God, okay, which is God's laws, okay. The reason why I'm, I see, most people are not going to keep the laws. We get this. We understand this. There's no reason to throw it in our faces anymore. It's the understanding of where they're found. That's the key. That's what you're expected to understand, right? See, your house is your body, Okay. And in the, in the Exodus, it was telling you, you know, write these on your doorposts of your house, which is telling you, put these commandments in your house, which is telling you, right, as what Jesus was the light, okay, the light, the law is the light. So you're expected to keep this understanding, this knowledge of God's law with location where they're found, where they're found in the Bible, right, as your light. That's what makes people Israelites. Okay. Then in order to fulfill what Jesus had said to love the, the Lord your God is by keeping that. How do you practice that? Is by sharing that with your neighbor. The location where they're found and the divinity behind it. Okay. That's how that works. That's how the divine law works. Okay. It has nothing to do if you're going to be holy and righteous and, and you're going to break it now and then. Well, no, it's beyond that, guys. Okay, God already knows that you've already broken the commandments. The only thing is that God does not break his covenant. See, that's, that's the problem. Okay, if God doesn't keep his, if God keeps his covenant, right, you're expected the same as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? But instead, what happened is, you know, foolish men came along and said, oh, you can't do it because you're not, you're not able to do it. So we have to kill Jesus in order to be saved. No, God had already masterfully paid every, all the sin in the beginning already. Revelations or Genesis 22, 13. God was the ram. Okay, because he spared the son. So which is that son represents everyone throughout the world. Okay. Either you accept that or you don't. That's your choice. Once you understand that knowledge, okay, that when you do die, that that understanding is always going to be stuck in your brain. There's no, you can't get rid of it. It's forever there. Right? So when you do die, poof, you'll just come back again. <laughs> it's just a cycle of life. It's as simple as that. Right? You don't want to have, not, not have, like the innocent the one that don't, the one that have been deceived by other people, right? They come, you know, the ones that just die that not with no knowledge. But the ones that do, like the pastors and all these teachers, these rabbis, there's greater condem condemnation for them. These are the ones that are getting thrown alive in the fire with the devil. 
See, do you, do you understand what I mean? What I mean? Innocent people will always come back regardless because they were deceived, okay? And that's the beauty, right? So that's where your faith has to come in, okay? So these people that are uh, leading the flock, they're not supposed to, okay? Because they're feeding you with tainted words like men's opinions, right? How are you supposed to have also you're supposed to know that heaven is the internet, right? The internet, Windows operating system 7 to 11, right? Operating system 11 came out in the year 2022, right? 11 11 is 22, right? 16 11 King James is the version I use, and that's the version that God chose, okay? Why I say that is because in uh, now pay attention, Ecclesiastes 4 8 which is associated with April 8th, okay? So we'll just quickly go to that verse. Oh, that was just my Facebook. Four eight is what, April 8th, right? So now you're gonna see why it's important that any other Bible verse, other than the 1611 King James, is the correct version. Oops, my bad. 8-4. So e Ecclesiastes 8-4. Okay. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may see unto him? What doest thou? Obviously, you know, it's like King James, because God chose King James, which basically the Hebrews, the Jewish people, have no king because they're in rebellion. As you see, they're murdering people, right? And it's, it's too bad. Some Jews are on that side. Some Jews are on that side. Point is, you should be on the human side, <laughs> right? It, it doesn't matter what 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 culture you practice. It what matters if you are human or not, because we're all human. We're all equal. Doesn't matter what religion you 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 are seduced by. <laughs> Ultimately, God is the king, and God decides whether or not it's His kingdom. So that's why I'm saying that the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims are all in danger. Okay? They have to relinquish. They have to repent of the devil's religions and return to God, which is the knowledge of God. And that's and, and, and pursue that knowledge is what I'm showing you. So that's why I'm showing you these verses so then you can understand the pattern of the Bible. Once you understand that, that pattern, how it is, you won't let go of the Bible. Your knowledge will just increase. And then your, your fruit will multiply. Isn't, isn't that how it goes, right? The simplicity of it. Like, that's why I said, it's not your understanding. You just read the word for what it's saying. That's what faith is, guys. Faith in the word. And that's the key. It has nothing to do with our personal faith. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. I'm drinking uh, French vanilla. You know, I, I don't mean to be harsh on certain people when I'm on their channels, but you know, you kind of, you, you, you just, you're just like, you know, guys, you know, you, I can, I, I mastered the Bible, guys. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. When the, when the, when it basically says the Lord knows every part of, every hair that's on your head, which is basically a metaphor explaining to you that God knows it all. That's what's in the Bible. There's no, there's no, Every particle dust, I'll get rid of. Any cobweb that's that's hidden somewhere, I'll get rid of. And trying to expose that to you and, and clean it up for you, so you can you can get you get some understanding to what the Bible's actually trying to say, what the actual prophecy is. The prophecy is the internet, the world wide web. 
everybody's going to see him in the cloud, right? It's, eh, what more could I say, right? And you look at the commandments, right? You look, for instance, Exodus 20, 16, okay? Matthew 16, 20, is, they're the exact same numbers, guys. They're just flipped, okay? <laughs> right? Exodus 20, 16 is a commandment, which is also associated with 2, 7, right? Thou shalt not bear any wit bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's what everybody's doing. Okay, because you guys, you don't know if you don't know understand what the Bible's saying in, in the Bible, right? It's best you you back off from the Bible and find something else to do, right? Because remember, it's your your everlasting soul that's at stake, right? When you're caught lying, especially on the internet, and if you, you know, have a car accident one day and all that information's on the internet. It's not going anywhere. You're going to be forever in, in shame because everybody's going to know what the truth is. That's what it means to be left behind, guys. So there's always time right now, you know, to, to clean up your act and admit that you're all wrong. Only God is the only one that's right. Regardless what Paul says, regardless what anybody says, you just need to read the Bible and now understand what the new understanding I'm trying to show you because that's what God does. God comes to create a new heaven and earth. Because the old one is going to be wiped clean. Which is an understanding. That understanding is the heaven is the internet. That's the new understanding. <laughs> right? The windows of heaven were opened. Which is Genesis 7-11. Right? You see, you'll see a pattern there. Lord God, I will spread out my net. Ezekiel 32, 3. Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, heaven is like unto a net. Matthew eleven twenty five 25 and 13, 47. The kingdom of heaven would be likened unto ten virgins. Matthew 25, 1. www.3j, all things were made by him. John eleven twenty three, Or 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. The seal of God is Revelation 7 2. Take a close look at those numbers and see the pattern. Okay? Because I'm trying to give you guys eyes to see. That you because this is this is what I see in throughout my life. I see things differently in the Bible than any of you do. And I know for that's hard for you to most of you it's hard for you to grasp because you were brainwashed to think this one certain way. Right? I get it. I don't know. I know how hard the Bible is. <laughs> you know, I studied it my whole life. You know, frustrated because, you know, you try to explain this to someone and someone says they're stuck to their own belief when your beliefs are all wrong because it's okay to be wrong, right? It's when you don't admit you're wrong is where the problem comes because then you're hurting some other else, an innocent soul. And when you're hurting an innocent soul... That innocent soul is the one that goes scot-free. The one that's lying to the innocent soul is facing greater condemnation. Like if you're using Paul's words to justify lies of your salvation, when it's God's salvation to begin with, well, obviously you're kind of messing with God's salvation because eventually you're still going to stand before God, right? Whether you guys like that or not. Right? These events are taking place with or without you. Right? So do not fall into the trap of, you know, lying to others and hurting other innocent people when you don't know. This idea of Jesus Christ does not exist. It's in a delusion of Paul. Right? You need to understand, you need to go back to the, the road to Damascus and reread that carefully. Because... Acts 13 and Acts 22 are, are chapters that are kind of conflicting each other. Like I said, you know, it has, right, uh, contradictions. And when there's, there's no, should be no contradiction when it comes to God, right? So this contradiction alone should be evidence to say that Paul's a liar. It was all in Paul's head, which is telling you that he was suffering PTSD, Okay, and anyone that suffers 
that amount of PTSD is usually a soldier. And Paul was a soldier, or Saul was a soldier. He was the one that was instructed to hunt down and eliminate the, 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 the early Christians. Right? And if you go through your life seeing that type of evil throughout your life, well, that type of guilt is going to play on you. That's where Paul's guilt comes from. The curse comes from. So when you guys are seduced into Paul's words, oh, uh, for all of sin and come short of God, well, you're placing this guilt on yourself. When you're, in, in, you're, you're innocent, because you never committed those crimes. Paul did. So why would you burden yourself such? Do you see what I'm trying to explain? But the Christians hang on it too, too, so much because they're trying to hang, they fell for the trap of the, the idol Jesus Christ. It doesn't exist. This is why at the end we all stand before God. And I'm just trying to get you ready with the words so you can see what, <laughs> what the prophecy actually is. All right. So I'd like to say that uh, God has expectations God has expectations right to to use your brain and faith is learning how to think. Okay? Because that's what the Bible is there. The word is for you to use it and think. Use your mind. Look at the numbers. Look at the present. Don't look at the past. Because when you're looking at the past, right? Well, you've you've taken the Bible and you're 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 placing it into man's context. It doesn't. That's not the way the Bible works. God has a way way different understanding than you. That's what I'm trying to show you. Okay, this is not how the prophecy is being fulfilled. Okay, so we know right now what's what's playing out right now is that Israel is facing Netanyahu and his uh, generals have been they've been ordered to cease what they're doing and there's arrest warrants on them so that means in these countries where they're where they apply they're going to be arrested regardless what they say because they're war criminals you can't get away with murdering that many amount of people and blaming a terror organization which doesn't exist. These are people that are just defending their homeland. No matter what you you believe or feel that this is Israel, it's not Israel, guys. You guys are destroying Israel is what you're doing spiritually by supporting these murderers. These are the terrorists that you guys are believing in. Israel is spiritual. God's Israel is spiritual. The one that God gathers personally, not what men gather. So now we're going to see how this is fulfilled biblically. The International Court of Justice, which is short for ICJ. This is fulfilling Matthew 5.8. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Okay? ICJ, it's telling you right in your face. Okay? Just like, you know, the name Jason in the, the calendar, July, August, September, October, November. It's right there. Jason's right there. Right? Islam, Christianity, Judaism. ICJ. <laughs> Do, you, Do you see the connection there? Right? These are, this is Babylon. On social media okay because they're the Jews the Christians are babbling right now right they have built their houses their towers okay 
And they're the ones confused because the gods came down and confused, confounded the language. So each person here that's on YouTube is babbling their own understanding, which is causing confusion. This is where I come in and try and, you know, put an end to it and say, you know, because that's how God brings peace. Because it's God's understanding. And it's God's divine will and his word that God shows and displays and proves. Okay, this is how everybody gathers into one accord. And they'd be like, wow, that's amazing. And we all have that same understanding. Okay. Isaiah 121. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Isaiah 13, 3. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Isaiah 13, 19. And, Bab and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why I said this is being fulfilled right before your eyes. Jeremiah 25, 11. And this whole land shall be desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Yeah, so we're, we've just finished that. The tribulation is over. Okay. Matthew twenty four fifteen. When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken by of by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso read, let him understand. Okay. Mark three twenty three, and he called unto them, and he said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? Mark three twenty four, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Mark three twenty five, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Mark 3.26, and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but has an end. Revelation 16.19, and the city was divided into three parts. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. There's no disputing that, that's a fact. And the cities of the nations fell. And great, great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness, fierceness of his wrath. Revelation 17, 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. Revelations 18, 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitations of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit and every cage of every unclean, hateful bird. So, that's pretty serious, guys. If you find yourself, if you go on YouTube right now, you can see a bunch of them. You'll know what I'm talking about. These are the verses that Christians won't allow, won't read to you. These are the ones I'm showing you. Because nobody's going to show you these verses. They're going to keep replaying the same ones over and over again. They want to keep you brainwashed. They want to keep you dom domicile. They don't want you understanding who you are as an individual, as you as an anointed child of God. You're already born anointed. Whether you whether that's Christ or Messiah, whatever, it doesn't matter. Titles of men are worthless. You are a human being. God created man in his image. What more do you guys want? Do you understand? Instead, you see here all these different foolish Christians that are on YouTube calling themselves names when they can't even keep their own name. They can't even... Because <laughs> when you're making up a name... To deceive someone else, you're bearing false witness, guys. 
That's the first thing God will recognize. You sit there. Oh, I don't know your name. If you can't even get your own name right, what the heck's wrong with you? Right? So kudos to the people that keep their own name that's on YouTube. You have to, you're quite brave. Okay? So all these other fake trolls and all these people that make up their own names and all that, well, obviously there's no changing them. Once a sinner, always a sinner. They're going to keep doing that, so don't worry about it. Anyone with a fake name, you know a fake name. Stay away from them. They don't. They, if they can't even get their own name right, they don't even know their own name. Stay away from them. Obviously, they're a liar. <laughs> right? Common sense, guys. Come on. You need to start thinking and start understanding that by respecting yourself, you begins by respecting your name. That's why I'm showing you my name. Because I am... My name is holy. I've sanctified my own name with the Bible. I'm sure everyone else had that same opportunity they had to do to do the same thing I have. Apparently nobody has. Because they're too focused on saying, you know what, well, I'm saved by Jesus is murder. Uh, no, you can't break God's law. Just simple as that, guys. Right? So anyways, I like to... Uh, sh sh <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Right? It's like almost the same as the, the tree of knowledge. Right? The tree of knowledge, right? The good fruit is God's commands. Right? Right? So if you're listening to what men are saying in the Old Testament, and you're listening to their opinions, that day thou eats thereof, thou surely will die, which is spiritual. It's a spiritual death. Okay? Right? That's why and and I saw the dead small and great and stand before God. Right? Because when Jesus is telling you in Matthew 24, 23, right? If any man tells you there's Christ here or there, do not believe him. Okay? So when you're giving up the title Christ, okay, you're, you, you're qualified, as what Paul says, the dead in Christ will rise first. Because since you've already given up the title Christ, because you're already anointed, you're, you're selling your birthright for men's idols when you're already a, a, a child of God, right? You're kind of selling out your birthright for men's uh, idolatry. That's the sin. So when you give that up, okay, there's no taking away your birthright. Do you guys don't get that? That's why the dead in Christ rise first. Right? <laughs> That's, Paul had no idea what he was talking about. John either. Remember, John went mad. He lost his head. So, anyways, I like to... Uh, you'll see, you see the pattern there? The God is not going to pardon those that shed innocent blood. It's as simple as that. God does not break his covenant. Okay. The Lord knows the thoughts of men are they are vanity. It's quite clear, guys. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, ye bloody men. Which is, you know, they're drinking the wine and getting drunk off it. You know what I mean? See, Jesus gave them a trap because he knew they were, they were the ones that betrayed him. Right? <laughs> Israel divided. Right? We just spoke to that. To the law and testimony, if they speak not according to this word, because there's no light in them. Right? The light is the law. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. You have... Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has muttered perverseness. Okay? And the pastors, this is about the pastors, right? And when, when God told them about the sacrifice, this is what God's saying in Jeremiah 7.22. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So God didn't command nothing about sacrifices or offerings. Men did that by themselves. Right? Right, you can read this about the pastors here. Ezekiel 34.10 And thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against the shepherds, and I'll require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from fleeting the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. 
for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that may not be meat for them. Why? Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, saying that, that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Well, I also forget thy children. That's pretty serious. See, what I've been noticing in Christians, if I show you on their comments, they spit Bible verses back at me like I don't know. And then when I when when I give them the I give them the the verse, I don't know what they're seeing, but they're seeing something totally entirely different because it doesn't suit their 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 gospel of Christ <laughs> and contradicts it. God's word are not going to be contradict Paul's words. So you can talk Paul's, John's, and their opinions all day. It's not going to solve anything. God doesn't change his his covenant, his law, his stance. Because Hosea 6.6, 6, which is today. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God that had burnt offerings. Right? Which is tied in with Genesis 6.6. 6. Genesis 6.6. 6, maybe I have it. Oh, well, I did have it in one of my other messages. But anyway... Genesis 6, 6 is talking about God was, uh, ups, you know, displeased with man. He didn't want to create man. He regretted making man, right? Well, yeah, that's why. Because man's gone his own way, his own understanding. They don't understand knowledge, God's knowledge, right? Right. Even Jesus confirms this. See, when they they put Jesus on the pedestal, he, Jesus gets this from the Old Testament. So he's not the one, the originator of these these verses. He's just reiterating. He's reminding you. That's all he's doing, like any good prophet would, right? And he and I will profess to them. I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. But ye go ye and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. See, he's not coming for sacrifice. Jesus is not coming to pay for your sins, guys. Right? First of all, he's telling you in Matthew 16, 20, he charged his disciples, tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. That's the, what you have to believe. You have to believe that. That he's not Jesus Christ. It's referred to as a catch-22. It's, it's, it's like a... A hidden trick in the Bible to protect it, a clause to protect it from the devil's entrapment. Only those select few that catch this and get to get it and believe it are the ones that are really saved, because you you ultimately you you want to know more, right? So then this will ultimately lead you back to the commandments, not to practice the traditions of men, right? You have to wait for the Lord and understand. How the word, because the word is your salvation in in reality. Now Matthew sixteen twenty three, but he turned and he said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan! Thou art an offence unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Matthew twenty four twenty one. For then shall be great tribulation is not such in the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. <sighs> Saul's the, the devil, right? Anybody that's a murderer, idolaters and all liars are going to be thrown in the lake of fire. Just that simple as that, guys. You can look through that yourself. Okay. But this is the stuff that you need to know. This is the stuff that stuff the Christians ignore. This is what people don't want you to see. I'm the unfortunate soul to show you this. And it doesn't matter. You guys could lay it all thick on me. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just showing you. That's my job. That's why you see my name.
but yeah you see how I uh, trying to bring some fairness here see there's my name Campo right the Lord of God of Israel lives my name here's my name so, well that's proof <laughs> the seal of God is my name because it says there his name is the Word of God Jason Campo you see my name what more do you guys want I have fulfilled my purpose I kept my word so I'd like to thank you I appreciate you all and uh, I apologize again to those that uh, were not ready nobody was ready I, I understand I'm here to help them okay so and when you're believing the idol right the, you're worshiping the lies it's always to say sorry and come back on YouTube and apologize and make amends it's 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 not that hard right so anyways I appreciate you all love the Lord your God with your heart mind and soul I didn't come to take away the law of the prophets I came to fulfill thank you and have yourself a very good day